Top right, we got our pink undead player, Ewar. Looks like he is going for a uh, quick death knight. It'll be interesting to see if he decides to creep a small green with the rod, or if he goes for an instant harass. And at the bottom left, we have Ning Zun. I believe he actually chose random, not orc. But I'm not positive on that. And he is going for a blade master opening, looking to be aggressive with just a shop. So he will probably buy a salve or two, maybe a clarity and speed scroll. Yeah. One salve, one clarity, one speed scroll. And now he'll look to be aggressive and tech. That's what we see. The player's forces are under attack. Acolyte getting picked off. Did get his scout off though. Okay, Ewar. Looking for his critter that he killed earlier here. We'll summon some skeletons. And start creeping. This one's an interesting camp to creep first. I don't think it's ideal. But... I'm sure you can kind of creep just about whatever. Looks like he just kind of wants to get another set of skeletons right away. Maybe should try to get a little more tanking done on this death knight so the skeletons last longer. But otherwise, yeah, now with the next set of skeletons, he should be fine to finish this. Uh, and Ning Zhiyun, on the other hand, actually went for the item rather than um, trying to harass right away. Which isn't bad. They do kind of run into each other now. Both somewhat equivalent XP. The Death Knight, however, has used three coils all out already. Um, does have his tech started. No Frost Tower yet. But otherwise, you know, just kind of see the Death Knight back off a bit. Blade Master Chase. And we might see some ghouls start to do some little chip damage here. Scare the blade away. We do see a Frost Tower coming out. I think that's a good choice. Um, if this ziggurat was maybe more like here, I'd probably recommend upgrading this one, because then you could use it for like, creeping this later. But I think this one's probably the better choice in this situation to protect the acolytes as well. Yeah, Ning Zun finishes the creep, and he's looking to harass again, and this could be a pretty big creep jack. He will likely get the creep. We'll see who can get the item faster. Oh, we actually see a coil coming out. Uh, Blade Master did take the item though, and I believe it was a circlet. Or actually, it might have been the gloves. Might have, it was actually the gloves, I think, right? Yeah. But I'm pretty sure he did get the item. Ooh. So we got a surround opportunity. Ewar closes it, and he's going to get the grunt. But the skeleton will die here. Can he replace? Does not get the replacement off. So the grunt does escape. But he is still getting a lot of damage done on this grunt. And there will be another coil soon. However, another 120 damage needed is kind of a lot. So he decides to just pull back. Uh, Ning Zhiyun, on the other hand, gets his double salve off. And will likely just kind of wait till his heals get a little bit more value here. Ewar on the other hand looking to get that level 2 which is very huge. Ning Zhiyun comes back in targeting the death knight has to run away getting quite weak here. We see a dust coming out there is no more wind walk currently though and we do see a grunt pick off. This unholy aura is going to be huge for Ewar. Not to mention killing that grunt. So good position for our undead player so far. And he also damaged the other grunt quite a bit. But he does need to be careful here. We have the Shadow Hunter out. There is also a sentry ward to spot the undeads creeping. And he has reached tier 2 already. We'll likely buy a heal potion. Or at least a um a player's forces are under attack what's that new item <laughs> the healing rod thing i kind of completely forget what it's called oh no okay we see koa coming out yeah it's very hard to deal with a early shadow hunter and hex uh second frost tower coming out 
Windrock should kill this, but he is slowed now, and this blade is taking a decent chunk of damage. Second Frost Tower on the way. This Fiend might also die, but if Ningxun commits too hard with his Windwalk, he might lose his blade here. The Frost Tower is close to finish. Lich comes out. Oof. That, that was pretty close, though. If uh, this Frost Tower was a little sooner, or if the Lich came out a little sooner with Nova here, that blade very well could have died. Ningxun, however, does escape and gets two Fiend kills. So a good little comeback from our orc. Um, he has slacked a little on his macro, but I guess he's also just having wood trouble. Uh, maybe his peons not being the most efficient here. One grunt kind of trying to help out, but turns out grunts can't exactly chop trees, so he needs to head out of there soon. And we do see a war mill come out now, which will help our orc player a lot. He should be fine now in wood though, because he's kind of got his two production buildings, he's got his tier 3 tech, second hero. So, wood troubles start to fix themselves after that point as orc usually. Uh, our undead player on the other hand does get the troll creep finished, picks up an illusion that he scouts with. Could actually cancel some salves here, which would be pretty huge. We do see a nuke coming out on the blade master, he has to be pretty careful. There is no... Oh, there is a dust still. It's on the Lich now. So he bought another dust. And looking to chase here. I think now maybe the undead should watch out to committing too hard. Especially with a shop here. Oof. And we see the blade... Or the Death Knight getting focused. And he dies before he can get out of the hex. Ooh. And that's one of the scary things about chasing into the orc base is how... How effective their heroes can be when they have access to a shop like that. So yeah, you are kind of in an awkward position now. Um, I do believe he got Hex, yeah. And this is likely going to be a dead Lich. Maybe another Fiend dropping as well. Maybe even both Fiends. So very rough position for our Undead player. And he decides to call the GG. I do think he was in an okay position until that point. He just needed to likely not chase after... Uh, he needed to not chase after the orc into the base. After he got the Blade Master weak like that, I think the best call probably would have been to just steal the orc's gold mine and then back off towards like your shop or something. Or go directly to your shop and both sides just exchange, uh, you know, continue creeping. So maybe a little aggressive by our undead player. Does get punished for it by the hex and uh, heal potion from the shop. So good play by Ning Ziyun to uh, retreat, get healed up, and turn on the undead. Okay. Game two, it looks like we are going to have Concealed Hill here. It'll be interesting to see um, what's the format? What do you mean the format? Oh, for the playoffs for this league? Is that what you mean? Yeah, the playoffs are top four. Which it looks like in your group, it's... Um, was it Floss, Method Man, and likely Dami? Uh, if Ning Ziyun wins here, probably likely Ning Ziyun. But if Ning Ziyun loses, it's very open. However, I believe the other players can still reach fourth place. It just depends how well Dami and Ning Ziyun do in the their next few games. Yeah, it's, it's definitely still open. They're just currently the front runners to 
reach top four with uh, Floss and Method Man. Um, you know, just about guaranteed at this point with their current position. But yeah, here we are, set, uh, game two on Concealed Hill. Let's update the score real quick. Oh, I forgot to show booster on the stream. Whoops. <sighs> I had booster on, but I forgot to turn it on for the OBS. Anyways. Game two, Concealed Hill. Top right, we have our purple undead, Ewar. Looks like he is going the same build, past Death Knight. Likely going to try creeping something at the start. We have an Acolyte Scout. And at the bottom left, we have our orange human player. He was random, as I mentioned the first game. This time getting human. And it looks like he is going a rifle build, likely Paladin or MK, I think would be the most common for a rifle build. But we'll see what he decides to go for. And yeah, it's going to be a slightly late hero and, you know, late barracks and blacksmith so that you can kind of just get all of them at the same time. And it is the Death Knight for our Undead player, throwing up the later graveyard to switch into Fiends. And our human player is indeed going for the Paladin. So this is definitely a f fun type of uh, playstyle from our human. I have definitely played it quite a bit myself. And... Once the Paladin starts reaching like level 3, he becomes quite strong. It's really nice having that uh, Holy Light to pick stuff off as well as heal. And you can take fights. Uh, you do need to be careful with the Paladin because he can definitely just be the focus of the undead and then you're just kind of in an awkward spot. Uh, skeletons can also get good value against this sort of human army because of all the extra, you know, just minions on the field as well as normal damage against rifles. Uh, Nova and later Impale as well can be pretty strong. But yeah, we'll see how our undead decides to combat this. Looks like the human is creeping without militia. Uh, I guess with two rifles, it's not too bad. Uh, especially because you can just use one or two of your holy lights pretty easily in the early stages like this. Or he might even try to take an early fountain camp because he has rifles. Our undead player on the other hand, just continuing creeping does reach level 2, has used, I believe, 3 raw charges now. Has taken quite a bit of damage on his Death Knight though, which kind of hurts, but it, he might just uh, do something like Creep the Crabs with Skeletons plus uh, 2 Fiends, and then send his DK to heal a little bit during that. That could be quite good for the Undead. Uh, he's actually going for the shop though, which is going to be a lot more difficult, especially because he just now has a second fiend arriving. And I think he's realizing how difficult it is. So we will see him change to a different location here once he gets his fiend in order. Yeah, he will go to the crabs now instead. I think this is much better to do first. You definitely want a couple more fiends and... Uh, some skeleton rods active before taking the shop. Human player on their hand, getting quite a lot done. He will be very close to level 3 after this. Should be able to just get it off of the crabs. 
and then we might see him take a quick detour to the fountain to heal. I think that would be a good call for him. Uh, no early damage upgrade. Sometimes you will see that. It can be pretty powerful when you have a bunch of rifles right at the start. But he does have tier 2 almost done. Undead also just finishing tier 2. And is heading back to the shop camp now. DK healing up quite a bit with that Unholy Aura. Still has the second rod, which will help a lot with his creeping. Yeah, we do see level 3 Paladin now. Should be level 2 Holy Light, and he does have one point in Devotion as well, which is definitely pretty strong. He actually goes for Scroll of Regen and uh, made a shop. Blood Mage second. Definitely pretty powerful to steal mana from the undead heroes as well as replenish the paladin's mana. So the goal in these fights is to tank with your blood mage or your rifles. And your paladin actually kind of just runs around and makes sure he doesn't take too much because you can't heal your own paladin. But you can heal everything else and you have plenty of mana with a blood mage to siphon your paladin. Undead on the other hand, also reached level 3, uh, did send out a illusion scout, we'll see the blood mage here, and he actually wisely uses siphon to just get rid of it, basically a free removal of an illusion, because siphon costs like no mana, so good use of that. Yeah, Ewar looking to probably try to steal creeps or creep jack but he's actually not going to get much done here though because the human is just also looking to steal camps at this point this point and also human is probably willing to take some fights in this early stages a player's forces are under attack we see a workshop coming up and a sanctum undead almost halfway to tier three taking out both sides taking out the opposing side's uh, gold mine. And just trying to get some extra levels here. Blood Mage reaching level 2. We'll see the Banish come out, which can be good for nuking, but it can also be good for uh, stronger heals. Now, you don't always need stronger heals because. Holy Light already does 400 heal, but sometimes it can still be useful. Yeah, both sides just continuing creeping. Fairly passive so far, scouting each other out. We do see tier 3 on the way for the human. Uh, would like to see at least one damage upgrade soon. Because it is a pretty cheap upgrade, 100 gold and 50 wood, and gives a good chunk of damage to these rifles. Dragon going down, Scourge Bone Chimes, kind of the opposite of what you want. Would have much rather seen a True Shot Aura or a stat item. Don't really need the Devotion because he already has Devotion. Yeah, Undead on the other hand, stole the gold mine camp, just retreating now. And he's throwing up a second slaughter, a uh, second ice tower. I don't think this one's really required, especially now that his tier 3 is also finished. So he has these two to attack. So maybe this is a little over defensive, but sometimes playing safe can still be fine. Our Undead player is quite a bit behind in supply right now but he has reached tier 3 he does have his orb he still has six charges of his rod might be able to get a rifle here nice heal by Ning Zian though and yeah our undead player just needs to kind of play a little passive and then maybe try to creep jack here once he gets some a bombs out and Ideally, some statues for mana, primarily. Then it'll start looking much better for Undead player. Does get a nice pickoff on the Priest here. 
Uh, the other priest does get healed though, and our dead player will likely have to back out again. But this is kind of what you want. You want to pick apart the human army as best you can with your spells, and then just back out. Pick apart, and then back out. Ghouls need to be extremely careful here. They can die very quickly to rifles. We do see the one damage upgrade now as well. But A-bomb with disease cloud. Now this is, this is definitely very powerful. If you can get that disease cloud to start spreading on a lot of these units, the priests will run out of mana extremely quickly. They're already running out of mana quickly. Um, you actually want to siphon your priests every now and then with your blood mage and then siphon creeps to get your blood mage back up in mana. Because otherwise you end up with priests like this. This one has 7 mana, this one has 50. And that's the problem of not having an arc mage. But Ningxiun did reach level 3 on his Blood Mage and level 4 with level 2 Devotion Aura on his Paladin, so pretty strong position for him. And he might be taking the other Fountain now. But Iwar in the meantime may be able to find a red camp of his own. Looks like they're going to have another little skirmish here. Uh, Lich a little low on mana. Would like to see a statue soon. And he kind of forgot his fiend, but yeah, he really needs a statue. Uh, you definitely want at least a mana statue with this army so that you can continue just throwing out nukes. Yeah, getting some disease cloud in. Not bad. Just make sure you get some coil in. Oh no, that A-bomb. Uh, one A-bomb does get picked off, but he has got disease cloud on quite a lot. Siphon coming out, very powerful now at level 2 Siphon. We see Iwar going for some nukes. Going to be rough though with the Paladin sitting on the side to continually heal. Nova coming out and this Undead army not doing as much damage as he would have liked. He is backing off though and his base is quite fortified. He actually has 3 Nerubians. Paladin dropping quite low, might have to use an invuln here. He does use an invuln. Priest also caught out of position, might be going down. Nice holy light though, but the rifle, the next focus. Very nice holy lights from our human player. And he's definitely in a commanding position army size. Uh, maybe a little bit too much spent on this defense for Iwar and his, his army is just not as large as he would like at this point sitting at 44 food with seven of it in production but if he can manage to hold on maybe get some nukes out on these mortars uh, try to get a statue out at some point for mana he can still turn this around because undead nukes can be pretty strong yeah one fiend getting target right away oof that last mortar shot makes the fiend go splat yeah, now with inner fire here though, it's looking extremely tough. These zero armor upgrade riflemen have 8.5 armor now, and this is just a rough position for our undead. Ning Ziyun looking strong here, taking out an A-bomb, going to focus down the next A-bomb. One rifle does fall, but with no mana left, it's looking quite rough for our undead player. We do have a Banshee out now, which are pretty powerful, but very vulnerable to that Siege Fire from Orders, and it does fall. More focus on another rifle, good Holy Light. The human is starting to run out of mana on his heroes, and even his priests running quite low, but the Undead as well has does not have much sustain currently on his own heroes. And we see him with a half health death knight and no mana on either hero. So still looking very favorable for our human player. Cleaning up another fiend. And Iwar calls the GG 2-0 for Ningxin. Uh, early game. Definitely okay from both sides. But I think more towards the mid game, 
is where Iwar starts lacking a bit on his uh, efficiency creeping and just efficiency producing units. So that's definitely something to work on. But otherwise... You know, otherwise, he didn't look too bad out there, actually. Um, another thing Iwar probably needed was a statue. You definitely want some statues for at least mana, because keeping your heroes topped off in mana helps a lot. But, you know, generally you want one for mana, one for healing. And then Ningxian, on the other hand, showed he could play multiple races decently well. Got the win in the first game with Orc. And on uh, Last Refuge, and then the second game with Human on Concealed Hill. He was playing random, I believe. And yeah, takes the 2-0.